Hello and welcome to part six of fundamental investing with the use of programming. Uh, where we left off, we had just added in this uh, second screen of screening for not only the price to book ratio, but the PEG as well. Um, originally, uh, really, we had a, quite a few that met the price to book ratio, but didn't meet the PEG of a minus one, but above zero. Um, and I definitely don't want to change PEG to accept anything above one, but I thought it might be interesting to look at anything that was above or below one. So anything below one PBR, anything below one PEG, uh, five years. And sure enough, we got a few more. We got AIG uh, with a 0.74 price to book ratio, and then a 0.95 PEG. Um, and we got Bank of America, Citigroup, anybody noticing a trend? <laughs> anyway, then we got uh, E-Trade, just barely meeting price to book ratio, uh, but quite a low PEG. Um, then we got what, Lake Mason, I think, uh, with those numbers. Not too attractive, in my opinion. The NASDAQ OMX, same thing, not super attractive. RSH for Radio Shack, which we found before, obviously there. Sony, um, a decent price to book, not the best looking PEG ever. And then also XL for XL Group. Um, not a bad looking one, I guess. Anyway, so basically all I was trying to do is just give us a little bit more options so we can actually continue through this tutorial series. Um, eventually we could run the screener against, like I was saying before, maybe the Russell 3000, something like that, and get um, even more stocks and stocks that match uh, better numbers that we would be more likely to uh, want to value invest into. Because, yeah, a lot of times value investing is going to be in stocks that aren't in the S&P 500, mainly because the stocks in the S&P 500 um, aren't going to show promising growth prospects. You know, they're just more of like a safe haven almost for money or something. But still, you can find options for value investing in the S&P. So anyway, I'm going to close this out now. And the other thing I think we should do now is now that we get those two numbers, maybe we won't put a limit on it, but the next thing we want to look for is the uh, PE ratio, forward PE ratio. Um, so generally what you want to look for is something with a, a decently low PE ratio. Uh, Bank of America actually with 10.6. I think normally uh, the number you're looking for is about 15, something that's trading at 15 times their earnings. Because um, basically this is this is price to earnings, right? So what are their earnings? And then, um, or I'm sorry, we're looking at the wrong number. This was a forward PE. We're we're trying to look for a uh, trailing PE right now. Which the trailing PE like currently where are we at? It's trading at 31 times earnings, uh, but you could look at the forward PE, which obviously uh, it looks like we're expecting some growth. It's only trading at 10 times the forward earnings that we're expecting for, you know, basically December 31st. But as far as the trailing PE is concerned, um, which I believe is 12 months, um, it's trading at 31 times. So. So I guess, you know, the numbers that we you really, you know, this is expected, you know, forward PE, same thing with like PEG, five-year expected. These are expected numbers, so they're not really set in stone yet. Like a lot could change. Um, so, you know, expected earnings are uh, oftentimes wrong. Uh, almost every time they're wrong. So, so anyway, especially like five years out, you know, PEG is definitely kind of risky. One year out, it's not so bad. But anyway, enough on that. Um, I think the first thing we want to look for is the trailing PE ratio. What is it trading at right now? And for Bank of America, that's 31 times earnings. That's uh, quite high. Um, pretty, it kind of scares me away. So <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily go for Bank of America immediately. But anyway, what we're going to be looking for is all the PE ratios, or at least trailing PE ratio for um, any company that meets the other requirements. So the same thing that we've been doing before, um, open up the source code, find uh, what we're looking for, just kind of highlight all the way to that figure, and then we'll come over to our script here, and we've not even, 
begun. But uh, we'll define uh, CPEG5 was the uh, price to earnings to growth for five years. We're going to call this next one PE12 for price to earnings for the uh, 12 months. And I almost kind of want to say like PET for trail, maybe it's PE12T for so we can remember that it's the trailing version. Um, equals and again this will be source code that split and we've been through this a million times so I'm not going to continue explaining uh, and again the other side of it was just closing table data tags so there and the zero with part after we split by that and that's PE12T um, the other thing I would like to say is okay so we got print stock meets requirements and then just since we're throwing in more data here let's go ahead and just so it, we can see it on the screen when it prints it out so we'll say price to book colon comma PBR and it's going to print out uh, PEG forward five years and then after that we want to print uh, trailing trailing PE 12 months and then we're gonna print out PE 12 T so now any stock that is under one price to book ratio and and under one uh, PEG for five years uh, we're gonna print all that out and then also we'll print the trailing PE we could also specify that only if you know the trailing PE is under a specific number but let's just look at what we get uh, by this. So I'm going to save this and run it, and then uh, so I'm going to pause it while this is running, um, and then I'll I'll resume once it runs through all of these. All right, it's all done. So after running it, we can see that obviously we got all the same companies that we had before. Um, just in case you are you're running this your, yourself and you're seeing that it says like not available or something like that. Um, usually, uh, I want to say not available, I mean it could mean something else, but usually not available means uh, the number is negative, as in they reported negative earnings, uh, so it's not a, not available. I'm not sure why they do that, but because some companies really will give you a negative, and then, but most of the time it says it's not available. So just keep that in mind, like you, there's no reason to like look into it very deeply because it is, it's a negative number. Um, so looking through the list, uh, you know, Bank of America not too too appealing, Citigroup not really too appealing with 16, uh, and then we've got E Trade not too appealing because it's probably negative. <laughs> Same thing with uh, Leg Mason, Nasdaq not too appealing with a 17, Radio Shack not too appealing with a not available probably negative. Sony, not too appealing, and XL. Well, XL is the only one that actually would meet the requirements of under at least 15. Surely would have to be under 15. So, so there you go. We really only have one more left in this before we might have to think about ex either expanding what we're willing to allow or um, expanding the pool of stocks to something more like the Russell 3000 or I guess the Russell 2000 maybe would be the next step or the S&P 1500. Anyway, um, so I'm going to close out of this. Uh, the only thing I've changed now is I'm just going to make a shorter array for SP 500 known. And these are just the ones that we know meet our requirements. That way we're not looking through the entire S&P 500 every time, um, sucking up our bandwidth and sucking up uh, Yahoo's bandwidth. So I'm just going to save that in there um, just to do that. So now the next thing that we are going to be curious about is a debt to equity ratio. We're gonna want that to be um, really, we don't want any more debt than equity if we're value investing. So we're looking for a debt to equity ratio that's gonna be less than one. So like, let's look at, for example, since we have Bank of America open, let me close out of this, pull up Bank of America, scroll down, where's debt to equity? Total debt to equity, it's a negative, possibly because again, or, or it's a not available possibly because it's a negative. Um, Total debt, yeah, so here we go. You've got total cash, total cash per share, and then your total debt. So yeah, they're probably running a negative um, debt to equity, so they're throwing a not available. Um, let's look at another one, Citigroup, and just see. And then we'll look at uh, XL real quick, just to spark some curiosity. So again, 
Uh, here, I'd be kind of curious why it's throwing us a uh, not available here as well. Um, let's see if, if we even have a number for XL. Because uh, all these guys are throwing it. Okay, Debt to equity here, 14.88. So there you go. Um, they've got quite a bit. They've got 14 times the debt that they have equity. So, or almost 15. So that's going to blow XL right out of the water for us <laughs> and uh, make it a non-good investment. But anyway, in the next video, I'll show you guys at least how to add that layer in. Um, we can also look at current assets. We want that to be twice as much as current liabilities. Uh, and then, I mean, you could look at the dividend yield if they're given a dividend. Um, you want that to be basically 60% or 66% of the uh, AAA bond yield and let's see what else would we care about I guess we kind of care we want to know about earnings growth and you want that to be I don't know at least above five percent over the last ten years so you could look at some of those other figures as well for the value investing but pretty quickly we're seeing that we're running out of stocks just looking for them within the S&P 500 but again that was kind of expected when it comes to value investing you're, you're usually not looking for stocks in the S&P uh, for when it, for value investing. Well, obviously, we can find quite a few good ones for fundamental investing. So anyway, hopefully you guys have been enjoying this series. Hopefully I've been able to help some of you guys out. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.